Hey there, Ray from LoveYourRV.com here once again and today I am going to upgrade my battery bank. I've just uh, bought a couple more 6 volt golf cart batteries so you see now my bank is going to hold four of these interstate deep cycle extreme golf cart batteries for a total capacity of 464 amp hours which is really going to help out with uh, our solar system and our boondocking. Uh, I'm going to add a couple more panels on the roof once I get down south but I thought I'd do this work before I leave on our snowbird adventures. So what uh, originally I had was this this is what came with the Cougar. It, uh, it was only a one deep cycle battery, had about 85 amp hours. Um, first thing I did when I got the Cougar was I picked up a battery box that held two golf cart batteries and I had a pair of Trojans in there and they lasted about four and a half years. Um, a lot of boondocking. I didn't know much about battery charging then so I might have been a little uh, brutal with them and uh, let them go down too far too many times but I uh, live and learn so now I'm going to try to pick myself up this nice uh, plastic box that'll hold the four uh, interstate golf cart batteries and it'll fit nicely in the front storage compartment here my Cougar so we're gonna get rid of this box and underneath that box there's a, a ventilation hole I'm gonna utilize that ventilation hole and then I'm going to make one in the top here so that we'll have a bottom and top ventilation. And then we'll uh, start hooking up all the wires. These two here are going to my Cougar's 12 volt system. On the Cougar they had, down here they had a couple, uh, these are like uh, auto fuse breakers. So the 12 volt goes to there and then it heads off into the rig. So that'll get hooked up to my battery bank. Also my inverter will get hooked up to the 1000 watt inverter will get hooked up and my uh, solar panel controller. So first thing though is I'm gonna, gonna drill out a hole in the plastic box and put in my ventilation and then I can start hooking things up. And I'll show you how I'm gonna wire up the four six volts to make one large 12 volt battery. Okay, so I drilled myself a nice ventilation hole on the bottom and uh, mount the, the battery box right above where Keystone had put the ventilation hole. Next I'm going to wire up my battery bank. So I have two 6 volts and two 6 volts, so I'm going to wire them together to make, make it act like two 12 volt batteries. So I'll wire them in series. And to do that, I'm going to have to have a wire from the positive of one of these batteries to the negative of the other and positive of this one to the negative of that. That'll make two 12-volt batteries. And then once I have two 12-volt batteries, I want to run those in parallel to make uh, one large 12-volt bank. So I'll be running from a positive here to positive there and negative there to negative there. So I've picked myself up some heavy-duty cables. I've got uh, one gauge cables to do the job. So I'll uh, wire those in and then show you. There we go, all wired up. So I have my negatives tied together here and then the positives are paralleled over there and then I have my series of the two six volts going across. So effectively I've made one giant 12 volt battery to replace the original small battery. Uh, so the original had about 85 amp hours. This bank has about 464 amp hours. So I've more, almost five times as much power there. Let's see, 80, 85 times five. Yeah, oh, you do the math. Anyway. Usually they'll give you the, the original little 12 volt battery is usually good for a night or two where something like this would probably last you know anywhere from three four nights all the way up to a week or so just depending you know how much energy you're going to be drawing while you're dry camping. Um, I've hooked it in to the same way Cougar had it, uh, the Keystone Company, 
I had a ground right down there, so I've hooked onto the same ground they used, right onto the frame, and then into the, the two uh, bus fuses down here. So that's, that'll power the rig. But I want to add some extra stuff, because I have my 1000 watt inverter, so that I can run household outlets power inside the rig. And I also have my solar power controller up there. I have two panels on the roof. Um, if you saw that install video, you know I have 200 watts up there. I'm going to be pretty soon installing another two panels, so I have 400 watts. And hopefully that will be enough to give this new battery bank a good charge when we're boondocking, so I won't have to use the generator at all when, when it's sunny out. So I have a few doodads to install. I'm going to take, I had this switch before, in, in the older setup I had the original 85 amp hour OEM battery and I had added my two Trojans, so I had, uh, you know, one and two switchable banks, plus it has the off, so I'm going to use this as a um, disconnect, so, you know, if I'm putting the, the Cougar in storage or something, I can disconnect the power, or if I want to work on, on some of the 12 volt circuits, so. I'm going to mount that somewhere. I also have my 80 amp circuit breaker for my inverter. So it's like a big fuse. And also I can use it to disconnect the inverter anytime I want. And I also picked up a 40 amp circuit breaker for the solar controller. And I'm going to put that in circuit as well. Plus, I have the original fuses I installed there to the panels. So I have lots of fail-safe devices here, just in case something goes wrong with the wiring. It won't burn up the rig. Okay, so I think I'm going to install the inverter stuff first. I finished wiring in the 1000 watt inverter. Installed the circuit breaker up here. It's an 80 amp circuit breaker. 1000 watt inverter, so 80 amps plus times 12 volts is 1000, so that should blow if, if it goes beyond its peak. Um, also, I can disconnect it just by pushing the button. Now the inverter is disconnected from the battery. And just wired it in with nice heavy 4 gauge um, wire. Went positive to positive and around negative to negative. So basically I've wired this this in using off-the-shelf store-bought stuff that I got at a local auto supply house. Um, I think um, down the road I'm gonna meet up with a buddy of mine who's really good at uh, putting on connectors and uh, heat shrink tubing and stuff like that. So I'm going to shorten all these up. You want to go as short and as thick as possible anywhere you can. I guess it all depends how much money you have, you have to spend on wires and how handy you are. But this is all just uh, off the shelf stuff. This is a 1 gauge, 18 inch, 18 inch. So it's still a pretty short run. So and an only a 1000 watt inverter. So I, I think I shouldn't have any problems with uh, undersized wire at all in this bank. So next I'm going to in, reinstall my solar controller and attach it up to the bank and install the breaker for it. One dimes. Looking good, looking good. Okay, so the charge controller is back in place. This fuse up here is coming down from the solar panel, so if anything goes wrong there, it'll blow. And then this is a breaker. Um, I can turn it on and off. And it's a 40 amp between the controller and the battery bank, in case something goes wrong there. So it looks like she's working properly there. Got two green lights. Um, when I add the then the next two solar panels, I'm going to add another 200 watts for 400 watts. So this is just a very cheap uh, charge controller that came with my original kit. So I'm going to look at uh, upgrading that charge controller. I also want to put in a battery monitor system. 
I'm likely going to go with the Trimetric brand. So I'm putting a, a shunt so I can uh, measure what's coming in off my solar and uh, the state of charge my battery bank. And there we go, the, the inverter's working. Let's just test it. Turn it on here, it's got a manual button. There we go, 12.7, good. And on my system, it just goes off on this uh, shielded uh, cable here and just a one outlet in our rig. Um, I decided against putting in a transfer switch and powering all the rigs uh, outlets. We, the way we boondock with our energy needs, one outlet's fine. Um, I can do without running the microwave and, and having all the plugs live. Um, if I did want to do that, I could always unplug this and plug in our main power cord as long as I turned our converter off. Um, the breaker through the breaker off so it's not trying to charge the batteries as it's it kind of creates a weird loop But that's possible too. I could always plug the rigs uh, Power cord into that and it would power all the plugs, but I've never really needed it the way we boondock so There we go. I've added the solar power positive here and negative down here starting to get a lot of cords in there <laughs> should be good so what do I do next oh yeah I'm gonna put in this switch so I have a battery disconnect switch for the 12 volt the RV's 12 volt system so I'm thinking of mounting that right there on a box there we go I got the on off switch in place there and mounted so that will turn the on turn the power on and off to the the 12 volt circuits in the rig so this this uh, power wire heads off and powers all the lights and water pump and all that kind of stuff in the rig. And then this other wire heads down into the battery bank. So I can turn that off with that switch. I can turn my solar controller off with that switch. And that switch I control my control can turn my inverter off. So that makes it nice. Okay, so I'm pretty well completed wiring my bank here. Maybe a look at the connections. Like I say, the only thing left to do is if I want, I may uh, shorten up some of those leads. It's hard to say. It's they're quite thick, and I don't really draw much power off this bank, so we'll see how it goes. So uh, on the blog post there, I'm going to write up a schematic diagram of the circuit and the wiring of the battery bank. Um, I've added some rubber grommets to the holes here and also I've drilled the bottom and installed hello installed some eye hooks uh, here and here and on the other side and that's what I'm going to use to keep the, the box in place and the lid down on it so we'll just put that together and give you a look at the, the finished finished product So as a final step, all the connections, I like to give them a good coating of uh, dielectric grease. Just so that uh, air can't get at uh, the metals. Helps keep the connections nice and uh, clean. So I'll go around every connection and just give it a good coat. Okay, there we go. Looks like I got a good amount of storage on this side and it uh, looks pretty pretty clean, pretty slick. There's my strapping in place. That should be enough to hold it in there. Also easy to uh, get at if I need to maintain the batteries. Just unclick these, pop it off and the lid will pop off. There's my uh, ventilation it goes up and uh, there's a little grill on the outside of the rig here. I'm not too worried about ventilation. If you look down here, that's where the fifth wheel landing jacks are. So there's uh, quite a bit of air gets in and out of this compartment. There's also a hole over to the propane tanks and they're vented to the ground. So 
I've never really had any problem with corrosion at all in here. The last system I had in for over four years and not a speck of uh, corrosion, so gets lots of air in here, which is a good thing. Okay, so my next, next task will be adding some solar panels and upgrading that charge controller and a few other bits and pieces. That'll probably be maybe a month or so from that from for now, from now when I get down south and I'll probably buy the parts down there so uh, stay tuned for that until next time this is Ray from loveyrv.com happy trails cheers